I'll be talking about um, this new capability we have in Spotfire 7.7, .7, which is the uh, the tear aggregation. And as Michael was uh, pointing out, we've had the uh, the tear ability to create columns um, with irregular expressions. But this um, the difference here is that by doing the aggregation, it can now respond dynamically to uh, to a visualization. Like if you do a filtering or changing your categorical variable, you can um, see it respond dynamically. Here's a, a very simple test data set. I just have one X variable, and I've got a couple of different categories just to play around with, just, just to illustrate the ideas. <clears throat> if I go over to the um, next time, make a histogram of this, you, know, you can see it's kind of a lopsided, probably the log normal uh, distribution, distribution. And I've got a vertical line here, which is set to the um, one of the quantiles of the, of the distribution. And I can control this by this probability level. So if I change the probability of my slider, the, the black line moves around. <clears throat> and at the same time, these two cross tables down here um, show the exact same value there. So as I, as I move the probability level, you can see these, these numbers changing. Now what's going on behind the scenes <clears throat> is that I'm running a tier aggregation expression to get these numbers. The tier aggregation expression takes in the entire data set um, and basically finds the quantile. So if I if I take a look at um, there's, there's actually two different methods of doing this. I'm going to take a look at this method. I'm calling the registered method first um, because it's um, it's actually my preferred method. So if I look at the the customer expression for this value, what I have is I have um, I'm calling this tier aggregation quantile. This actually is a function that I've registered. It's a um, so a custom function I register, I'll show you how that works. But basically what I'm doing is I'm bringing in my data X column and the, the user probability, right? So this uh, aggregation expression uses two inputs, uh, the column here, data.x, and the um, document property, user probability. And the um, underlying code here for the tier X quantile, as I mentioned before, that's a that's the uh, expression that I've actually registered here. So to get there, you basically use the same exact method as you, as you um, use for, for data functions. You go to this data functions properties, go over to the um, expressions functions uh, tab right here. Here's my function I, I register. And to, to register a new one, you just click on new. It's very easy to do that. And the edit thing here is, here's what I'm actually calling my R code, my, my typical R code. I'm calling this quantile function, just a built-in function, input one, input two. Um, it's a pretty simple thing, but because I've got this registered, I can call it multiple times. Well, there's nothing really dramatic here, but the <clears throat> the uh, the key is that if I change my my grouping variable from none to one of these other um, variables I have, like color, for example, what happens is the visualization splits into three columns, <clears throat> and the two cross tables here split as well. So. Um, and as before, as I, as I move this um, this probability around, each of these each of these graphics panels has a its own unique um, vertical line here showing the quantile at that at that grouping. So it's basically doing an on-the-fly grouping um, for the, for these um, for these three three groups. Now the key for me as a, as a person who writes R code is that if you can go back and look at my um, underlying R code. Right, uh, here's the expression of functions, just the editor. Nowhere in here is any mention about about the group. I don't have to worry about the, any kind of a loop or anything like that. I don't have to set up a, an LPI or a for, any kind of looping. I just simply say, look, you know, whatever comes in here is input one, input two. That's already been filtered down to the data strictly within each of these little groups there. So I, I it's all taken care of for me. I just have to focus on writing a, a, a tear function to um, give me whatever I went to for that group of data. So um, it's very it's very convenient to use. And if I change this to the other one, which is my other kind of dummy thing, the, the letter, it just changes back and forth. And I get the, um, the the same kind of responsiveness of, you know, here's my here's my um, quantile showing showing at those at those different groups here. Now there is another <clears throat> way of doing this, a more direct way, which I'm calling the embedded method, which I've got in this upper um, cross table right here. If I take a look at the the, um, the method here, basically I'm just calling it on the fly. <clears throat> uh, 
I'm actually pasting in the code here. Um, here's my R code in the kind of a pink there. It, it, again, it's a very simple um, piece of code. I can just paste it right in there. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I've got the, the code there, the inputs, and I've got the, you know, the, um, the way it appears there. And what I'm calling here is this chair aggregation on real. So these are some of the built-in, we have some out-of-the-box functionality built into um, the Spotfire. So if I go to my, um, here's my expression editor. If I go to my um, category of statistical functions and just kind of scroll through here, when I get to the tear section, um, this tear binary, tear boolean, these are all the standard um, expressions for the, to produce a column of data. And then carrying on down here, there's the tear aggregation series, tear aggregation. What these are is, um, I'm actually using tear ag aggregation real here. So basically it, it, it inputs, so this function here, tear aggregation real, inputs some arbitrary code. You can just type in on the fly as many inputs as you want to, and then it'll produce a single real valued um, result. And, you know, likewise, for integer, binary, boolean, and so forth, it'll produce the single result of that data type. Now, in this, in the same exact list, is my um, here's my function that I registered myself. I, I've given the short name tier ag uh, quantile, but that's that's the one I've actually registered. So it's as easy as that, right? So I just register the function in my in my um, dialog for you know going to editor data function properties to my expression functions, and I can make a new one if I want to, give it a name, a description, re return value type is whatever it is, and it's gonna be, um, so I'm gonna choose the aggregation function here, it'll return a, sing a single value there. So basically here's my choice between my column function or my aggregation function, and it's as simple as that once I register that, it'll appear in the, in the list of, of functions there. Now, I'll be applying this method, again, this is kind of a toy, toy example, um, applying this method to the idea of net present value. So um, let me jump over to the other example I have. So quite often in, in financial situations, you have a, a case where you're making an initial, initial investment in a project and you the project will then return some uh, proceeds over some number of years. And the way this is often, shown graphically is that the years are spread out on the bottom x-axis and the amount of money changing hands is shown on the y-axis. And from the point of view of the lender, the initial outlay is the, um, the big, uh, one big negative number. And then as the proceeds trickle in over the years, you get these smaller positive numbers coming in. So this is like, you know, imagine a mortgage from the point of view of a bank, the, mortgage, the bank puts out a big lump sum of money to get the mortgage. If these would be the mortgage payments and the exact same thing for any financial project. You, you put some investment in it first and you get the returns over many years. And the question would be, you know, is it better to have bigger returns over a short time span or do you believe in a longer time span over, or over a um, longer period of time? So the net present value is basically the calculation to analyze this. So on this next tab here, I've got, um, the same um, kind of a cash flows here, but I've got this discount rate slider. And these are set up, so these are actually the, um, the, the present value of the cash flow. So it's actually the summed um, discounted cash flow. I should probably change this. It's a discounted cash, cash flow. Um, sorry about that. Um, so the deal is as I, as I change the, um, interest rate here, these actually go down. So these, these little bars are, are discounted by the, the interest rate compounded appropriately for the number of years. So it, it goes down at a steady rate there. And to get the, the net of these, bar, these uh, plots on the right-hand side, the net present value is simply the sum of each of these things. So it's the sum of the big negative one plus the sum of all the positive ones. And um, both this one and the one below, which is the internal rate of return, these are actually being done through the um, through these tear aggregation functions. So I've got two tear aggregation functions, one for the net present value and one for the internal rate of return. <laughs> Let me just show you quickly the um, uh, these two. So I've got the, here's my two registered um, data functions. So net present value 
to look at this. Um, well, first of all, it loads as R, library FinCal, which does a lot of stuff. And once you've loaded that, then what you've got to do is just call this MPV function and you are, you are done, right? So the, the MPV function um, needs two inputs, input one, the, the, um, the interest rate and the, um, the cash flow uh, variable there. So it's really as simple as that. You, you basically, if you uh, have FinCal loaded, you just use this built-in function and, and there you go. And likewise, for the internal rate of return, um, it's even simpler because it just needs one input, the, um, the cash flow, which is input one. It doesn't even need the, um, the, uh, uh, the discount rate. So the thing about the internal rate of return, as I move the discount rate around, that doesn't change. Um, only the net present value is the one that changes. And, um, <clears throat> you know, so this is actually easier than, you know, going out and coding up all these um, discounted cash flows and so forth. The incidental rate of return, by the way, is the rate at which each of these goes to zero. So there, if I look at the red one, if I, if I kind of fool around with this and make this, adjust this to make the red one go to zero, that's basically um, the effective internal rate of return. So that's, the, that's what that means is that at 1.75, um, the big negative out, outlay just exactly balances the income from these um, cash flows there. So it's the implied, implied rate of return given the existing cash flow. Now, just to show you how easy this is, this is actually created by my colleague Catalina Herrera, and she just simply went to a Google search, net present value using R, um, and she it comes up with this package FinCal on CRAN. If you look at FinCal, <clears throat> um, for example, net present value is a very simple call and it's, it's like as simple as that. You just basically load the package, turn this into a piece of R code and begin using it immediately. So the, the thing about these new aggregation functions is that, you know, they really do extend what you can do using Tipco's R and especially, you know, you can go out and get these open source packages and begin to use any of these methods um, that are available to for your calculations. Um, good, so that's um, all I've got.